Okay, so welcome to this presentation on three-tier architecture using datasets based on Microsoft current sort of uh, technologies. My name is Doug Rees and we're going to have a look at some interesting things here. What we're talking about is the idea of having a three-tier application where we're going to have a client talking to a middle tier, the middle tier talking to the database. We're going to have a client as a front end as either a Windows app or a web application. We're then going to have a middle tier which will have our business logic and the business logic will then call our data access layer, which we'll call our database. So the idea is a call comes in from the front end to the middle tier system. The middle tier often then just passes that call through to the data access layer, hits the database and downloads some information as a data set perhaps from the database itself. That is then passed back into the, from the data access layer into the business logic layer. At that point we don't need the connection to the data access layer anymore. We can then take that information and serialize that data set back down to the front end and we no longer need our middle tier object. So now we have our front end application that can then use that data, we can edit it, we can sort it, we can filter it, we can then send the information back up a little bit later on. So this is the type of architecture we're, we're talking about here. The first thing we need to create is a data access layer. Now traditionally this would often be done by creating business objects or an array of business objects. There were advantages and disadvantages of this. The advantages were that you could do anything you like there, you could make uh, very complex systems, but the disadvantage was it actually took a lot of time to develop these systems. Often you were also doing very repetitive tasks, as any time you wanted to add a new table to the database, you would typically add a new business object, a new data access object as well, and then you would have to map all of the properties to the columns on the tables and create insert statements, updates, deletes. You could often write code generation tools to do this for you, but it still took quite some time. Also, other developers on the team who were perhaps newer to the system may have found this a little bit tricky to duplicate all of this information for every class. The functionality that you got was limited to what you created, so you didn't automatically get things like searching, filtering options unless you actually implemented those yourself. What we can now use is we can, in .NET 2 we can use typed datasets to provide a lot of these existing benefits, but a lot more. We can do extremely fast development, as you'll see in the demonstration, of this system, so adding new tables takes only minutes rather than hours. We can work with a well-known object model that most .NET developers are familiar with and take all of the advantages of things such as data sets, data tables, and data views. However, in .NET 2, by the addition of partial classes, we can also add customization abilities to these data sets without fear of losing this information. We're going to take a look at this now by looking at how do we create our data access layer. So, we're going to start off with a sort of a blank uh, example and then we'll go to a, a fully functional example. So we're going to start off by creating a project, but this type of project that we're going to create is going to be a, uh, an empty project. Now I'm going to do this first one in, uh, in C Sharp, but what we'll see, we'll go to the finished version and then that will become our, uh, our final solution and that will be in VB. So I'm just creating an empty solution because I want to then go and add to this three other projects. Actually, I don't need him. So what I'm going to do is add in a new project and this is going to start off by being a class library. Class library is going to be our data access layer, so I'll call this the DAO. So we're going to take our data access layer, but we're going to use strongly typed data sets. So we're going to delete this default class, and we're now going to add to it a new item, and we're going to add in a data set. And we're going to call this data set our Northwind DS, Northwind data set. As you probably know from your past experience with .NET, essentially what this does is creates an XSD file, but it also creates some classes under the covers. I'll just take a few moments for it to do this. 
Then what we want to do is go and drag drop some tables onto this dataset designer. So we go to the Server Explorer, and we'll need to connect to SQL Server. So I have here the North a link set up to the Northwind database already. We're using SQL Server 2005, but that doesn't make any difference. This would work just as well with any database. And now what we could do is go and take, for example, our customers table and drag drop it onto the form, onto the designer area. This creates a customer's element within the data set. It also creates a customer's table. Okay, so we have our customer's table. And as you know, under the covers, what this is doing is creating a class. It's been auto-generated that creates the data set uh, itself, inheriting from the data set, and it also then goes and creates various other classes, such as the customer's data table itself. So it creates a data table that inherits from the data table class. We'll get various other objects, such as a customer's row and some events. These are the sorts of things that we saw in .NET 1.1, and there's not a lot of difference there. However, we have a new type of object now in .NET 2 called a table adapter. And essentially this creates a way of us working with and manipulating data in a very easy way the table adapter is down here and as you can see it automatically has a basic statement in it this statement of course has been generated by using the standard sort of uh, wizard under the covers so you can see it'll have a select command, an insert command, update, delete commands by default but we could go and, uh, and customize those if you want to, it's a bit wide let's make that a bit smaller okay so the select statement you can see we have it here the update command will be th the traditional update command, which we might decide to customize because maybe we're not so worried about uh, worrying about the optimistic concurrency. So we could go and sort of modify this statement if we wish to. We may decide to, to modify the update command so that we don't go and check all of the various different parameters. So we might just change this to where the customer ID equal to this. Okay press OK and that will effectively then rebuild the parameters for us as well. Something though that we might want to do is we might want to go and add another table to this list such as the orders and what happens in .NET 2 is it automatically adds the relationship in between the customers table and the orders table. Now of course the orders table also has various information such as the employee that actually placed the order. It might be quite nice to actually list the employee name in here rather than the employee ID. So what we can do is go back and actually customize the select statement and change how this actually uh, how it looks. So just to make this easier I'm going to add the table in for employees and I'm just going to ask for the last name and the first name columns. What I'm actually going to do though is add this in as a new select statement. So I'm going to select last name, actually I want to do the uh, first name first, add a space between them and then put in the last name. From employees where employee ID equal to customers, sorry orders dot employee ID and I'm going to call this as employee name then I no longer need this I only put that in just so I could grab the uh, the information and now we're just going to right mouse click and execute it and make sure it works so here we have an order and at the very end we should have our employee name so that's good that's what I want now the reason we're doing it like this as opposed to actually doing it as a join. If you, do it a, if you do it in a join, it will also change all of the update commands and the insert commands, and they will actually then try and update that employee name. However, if you do a select with an internal select here, this does not affect the actual update commands. So even if we say yes that we're happy to regenerate those commands, it wouldn't actually modify any of the update aspects for the new information. So if we look at the update, we should better see that there's nothing in here relating to the employee name or employee information. 